Hello everybody, welcome to Daily Entomologist and this video I am going to go through the my top five uh, favorite insects in my collection. Alright, so starting at number five on the list, I'm going with Phineas deformis. Um, and I'm actually just going to go with the genus Phineas as a whole. Uh, these are collectively known as rainbow scarabs. Um, these are dung beetles, and as you can see, uh, they're actually very quite beautiful in their coloration. Uh, I'm going to go ahead, zoom in here. You can see a really beautiful metallic coloration, depending on the light with a nice red on the orange there. Really beautiful green. Just all around a very beautiful species. As are the other rainbow scarabs as well. And uh, you see here, this is a uh, major male with that really long horn at the top there. Uh, they have major males, minor males, which have smaller horns and females which have no horns or very tiny horns. And here in the US there are seven species of Phineas, uh, but collectively there are about 50 I believe, with a lot of them down in Mexico. So far though, I've only been able to uh, collect a uh, single species, which is Deformis. And uh, this particular specimen is uh, collected in uh, Rancis County in Texas. So definitely a really beautiful species, a really beautiful genus. And uh, I think it's definitely worth going in the top five of my favorite uh, insects in my collection. All right, number four on the list, I'm gonna go with the tarantula hawk wasps in the genus Pepsis. Uh, this particular species, I believe, should be uh, Pepsis thysbe. Uh, collected this one in southeastern Colorado. Um, which I do have a video on my channel from that trip, if you remember that one. Uh, first off, I'm just going to go for the size. And uh, this is a ginormous wasp. And uh, this genus in a whole is are all really large wasps. And as the uh, name suggests, uh, the tarantula hawk wasps, uh, Adults will fly around, uh, find tarantulas, uh, put them in a burrow, and lay their eggs on it. And uh, larvae of these wasps uh, will actually uh, feed on the tarantulas. Um, the adults, however, uh, most commonly found on flowers and feed on nectar. Uh, what you can see from that collecting video from that trip, um, all the pepsis that I found. Uh, and uh, the ones that I collected, including this one, I actually collected while they were feeding on flowers. So, they are very, very cool, intimidating, large wasps. Uh, I'm just going to zoom in here. And it's kind of hard to, can't really tell right now but on the body they have a kind of like a shimmering velvety purplish blue color for the most part um wings all uh, i th i think all of them or most all of them have that orange coloration on the wings um there's other similar species but most of those are similar uh genera 
like hemipepsis and others that are very similar. Uh, but you can tell the difference between those from their uh, wing venations. As well as most of those species are pretty smaller. Um, so here in the US, the genus Pepsis includes uh, 14 species found here. Uh, some of them can be quite difficult to tell apart. But altogether, between uh, North, Central, and South America, there's about 133 species of Pepsis, which is really, really cool. And so, yeah, from the size, just how cool they are, the coloration, their beauty, their life cycle, I figured this deserves a place in my top five as well. It's just so impressive to look at and even more impressive to see them flying and uh, finding them out in the wild. Absolutely gorgeous. All right, number three on the list, I have the genus Lucanus. Uh, state beetles, specifically here I have a Lucanus elaphus. A giant state beetle. And once you take a look at this, you can just clearly understand why this is my top five favorite in my collection. Just to look at the size, the giant mandibles, very large, imposing, kind of scary looking beetle that one might think can uh, harm you pretty good. So the genus Lucanus are the state beetles. Uh, here in the US there are only four species. And in my collection I actually have three of the four species. Three of them are uh, widespread in the eastern US. Uh, this is a particular specimen uh, collected in North Carolina by my college roommate when he went there. Uh, the only North, uh, North American US species I'm missing uh, is the Southwestern species. Uh, is it Canis? Is it Montezuma, I think? Uh, that's the only one in the US I'm missing. Uh, total in the world, there are about 50 species. A uh, lot, most of them. I think all, all of them, except the US ones, are found in Asia and around there. But uh, state beetles themselves are really, really cool. Uh, decaying wood they feed on and everything as larvae. And I think adults as well. I'm gonna take a look at the, closer look at the head here. If I can get back into focus. There we go. See the mammals and just how weirdly the head is shaped. See the mouth parts down at the bottom there and there and then the uh, antenna. See the eyes on the side there. And the antenna coming off the side as well. Definitely a really, really cool species. State beetles in general are really awesome. And uh, definitely a deserving spot on the top five. All right, coming in at number two on the list, we have Dobbs and Flies. Uh, probably one of the most menacing looking insects one will come across, uh, especially when you find the males. Uh, this is uh, the eastern gob dobs and fly, Corydalis uh, cornutus or cornutus. Uh, this is the only widespread species in the US. Uh, there are three or four species. 
uh, phone here uh, with I think it's 35 ish uh, described globally um, and uh, there's no denying that these insets are pretty massive compared to my hand there it's gigantic um, the larvae are called heldromites they're actually aquatic uh, this spe uh, specimen I actually collected uh, on the St. Croix River in uh, Wisconsin on a camping trip last summer. I uh, got a couple of them. And I'm actually going to zoom in here. You see these really, really long mandibles. Uh, telltale signs that this is a male. Male dobson flies have these while females have regular short ones and it's the females are the ones that will actually give you a nice little pinch the males uh, these are pretty much useless for pinching you uh, female ones are just stronger easier to maneuver and can give you a little bite but the males are the more menacing looking ones with just how scary those mandibles look in a, in a really beautiful pattern on the head and the rest of the body especially when you look at the wings and everything first look you just see like a drab brown inset but looking at it, it's really quite beautiful and when you find these next to a body of water it's a good sign they are used as a water quality factor. Just an amazing, weird, menacing looking insect that I wish I could see more of. I've only found males a couple times in my whole life. I only have two in my collection. Uh, I mostly see females actually. So when I find males I'm always really excited. So when you're next to a body of water, uh, camping and stuff, check out the lights, um, or especially around the bathrooms and stuff, because this is where I actually collected this one, was at a light at the bathrooms along the river. So yeah. Amazing, amazing insect, really awesome group, funky looking group, and a pretty uh, important group in terms of... Uh, water quality and uh, all that stuff definitely had definitely had to include this one in the top five just amazing all right and taking the number one spot we have the giant ichneumon wasps in the genus Megarisa. Uh here in the US there are four species I am not sure which species I have yet uh, this is the only one I found I think I at least have one or two other ones uh, I do have the information for the labels and stuff for this one I just haven't got the label yet um, but these are just fascinating wasps I'm going to zoom in here. The females are easily recognizable. Large body with that very, very long ovipositor. Which, while flight, and just by looking at it, they can come across as quite menacing. But they are harmless. Males, of course, do not have that overpositor and are actually quite smaller. I've actually never seen a male. The only ones I've only I've only ever seen females. And uh, uh, at least the North American species, 
Um, they mostly feed on uh, horntail grubs, which are a type of sawfly. And they actually, so it's really weird and really cool. But I guess when uh, the horntails lay their eggs, they like introduce some sort of fungus. Uh, with the larva that helps them like digest the wood they're feeding on and uh, when females grow trees and they can uh, detect that fungus and they can tell that there's horntail larva in the wood um, kind of complicated but then they actually use this their very long ovipositor to actually drill into the wood uh, to get to the horntail larva inside, and then they lay their eggs near on the larva, and the uh, ichneumon wasp grubs feed on the horntail larva. So it's quite a fascinating uh, life cycle and reproductive strategy. Really, really amazing uh, group of insects. Definitely unmistakable. I mean, how can you not get over that? That's just amazing. Large wasps. I'm going to zoom in here. Just put my hand next to it. You see, there, it's large uh, when compared to my other insects. They're just as large and lengthwise. They're just really fascinating. As you can see, really beautiful colorations. They're so cool watching a fly too, because they're very loud. And they just, the ovipositor, ovipositor just hangs behind them as they fly and just really neat to see. So, their life cycle, how they look, just how cool they are. Just makes this, I think, my favorite number one insect in my collection. Uh, especially as a genus as a whole. Um, so yeah. Hope you enjoyed this video. Um, I'm kind of surprised I haven't done this before. But... Maybe I'll go through like the top five most beautiful insects I think I have in my collection as well. Or some other stuff, unless you guys can think of other like top five things I can do. But yeah. Number one, giant Newman wasps. And that is the top five favorite insects in my collection. Hope you enjoyed this video. Uh, comment, like, subscribe. Which one is your favorite? Or do you have your own favorites in your collection? Uh, so, uh, see you guys next time.